Good morning, everyone. I hope you had a good time in the snow. Um, welcome to class. So I'm going to, we're still going to save the Half-Life Lab and the graphing for our class when we're together. But for um, today, I'm going to finish chapter eight, module eight, chapter eight with you guys um, to help a little bit with the test and to finish up all of that information. So uh, let's get started. The first part that we talked about before was the uniformitarianism view of um, what happened uh, with the geological column. Okay, so we talked about um, what uniformitarians believe happened over millions of years and that the uniformitarianism view of millions of years would support evolution. It would leave enough time for evolution to take place. Um, and now we're gonna talk about catastrophism and what creationists think about how the geological column should look, what it should look like and how it formed. But to get started, we um, have some very important Bible uh, a Bible reference that we need to read. So let's get started with that. We're going to do Genesis 6 through 9. Question. Would you build a website for a major brand with more than 200 million users using Wix? Well, we did. Genesis chapter 6. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives, all of which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping things and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood, Room shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be three hundred cubits, the breadth of it fifty cubits, and the height of it thirty cubits. A window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above. And the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof, with lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. And behold, I... Even I do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou, and thy sons and thy wife, and thy sons' wives with thee. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female of fowls after their kind, and of cattle after their kind, 
of every creeping thing of the earth after his kind. Two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive. And take thou unto thee of all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be for food for thee and for them. Thus did Noah. According to all that God commanded him, so did he. Well, it was great when my computer spazzes out. Okay. So the fun thing with the serpent is, how does a serpent talk? What, what, and not only that, but why is this? Okay. So we did Genesis 6. Genesis 7. Chapter 7. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou, and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and his female, and of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. Of fowls also of the air by sevens, the male and the female, to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights. And every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. And Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. And Noah was six hundred years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. And Noah went in, and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood of clean beasts, and of beasts that are not clean, and of fowls, and of everything that creepeth upon the earth. There went in two, and two unto Noah into the ark, the male and the female, as God had commanded Noah. And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, the seventeenth day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened and the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. In the selfsame day entered Noah, and Shem, and Ham, and Japheth, the sons of Noah, and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons with them, into the ark. They, and every beast after his kind, and all the cattle after their kind, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and every fowl after his kind, every bird of every sort, and they went in unto Noah into the ark, two and two of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. And the flood was forty days upon the earth, and the waters increased, and bare up the ark, and it was lift up above the earth. And the waters prevailed, and were increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went upon the face of the waters. And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail, and the mountains were covered. All flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl and of cattle, and of beasts, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, and every man. All in whose nostrils was the breath of life, of all that was in the dry land, died. And every living substance was discovered which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle, and the creeping things, and the fowl of the heaven, and they were destroyed from the earth. And Noah only remained alive, and they that were with him in the ark. And the waters prevailed upon the earth an hundred and fifty days. God, I can help you, Travis. I don't need your help. I don't need your Okay, so, mercy. All right, now we are on Genesis 8. Okay. Living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters assuaged. The fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped 
rain from heaven was restrained. And the waters returned from off the earth continually, and after the end of the hundred and fifty days, the waters were abated. And the ark rested in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month, upon the mountains of Ararat. And the waters decreased continually until the tenth month. In the tenth month, on the first day of the month, were the tops of the mountain seen. And it came to pass at the end of forty days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made. And he sent forth a raven, which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from off the earth. Also he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot, and she returned unto him into the ark, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. Then he put forth his hand, and took her, and pulled her in unto him into the ark. And he stayed yet other seven days, and again he sent forth the dove out of the ark. And the dove came into him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off. So Noah knew that the waters were abated from off the earth. And he stayed yet other seven days, and sent forth the dove, which returned not again unto him any more. And it came to pass in the six hundredth and first year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the ark, and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. And in the second month, on the seventh and twentieth day of the month, was the earth dried. And God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife and thy sons, and thy sons' wives with thee. Bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee, of all flesh, both of fowl and of cattle, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth, and be fruitful, and multiply upon the earth. And Noah went forth, and his sons, and his wife, and his sons' wives with him, every beast, every creeping thing, and every fowl, and whatsoever creepeth upon the earth, after their kinds went forth out of the ark. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast, and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. Want to join the six-figure club? No. Okay. So, when we talk about catastrophism, that is... What we're talking about we're talking about the global flood and that is found in the bible genesis 6 through 9. um so we've talked about charles lyle and how he thought that the present was the key to the past and that if you looked at what's happening now you could figure out what happened then. But um, catastrophists, if you believe in, in the global flood, um, then most likely that's not the approach that you take on Earth's history. You do not think the present is the key to the past because you think that there was this amazing event that happened in the past that has not been recreated in the future. And so uh, thoughts must be applied differently to what happened during the global flood. Uh, let's see. And in this most, uh, when you have a, a catastrophism viewpoint, then you believe that catastrophes are the reason that we have everything from mountains and valleys and rock layers that these catastrophes, large scale like the global flood and then local small scale catastrophes are the most important part of making earth's geological features that we see today all right and we call uh we call people that believe in a in the earth being uh six thousand or so years old and believing that the flood there was a global flood we call those young earth creationists and in your book he calls them yecs so now we're going to watch to remind ourselves um, how fossils form. So let's 
take a look at this real quickly. Thousands of years into 24 hours. So um, this is a really interesting article talking about the how they in a lab they've been basically basically able to mimic what happens in nature over supposedly millions of years. They've been able to do it in 24 hours. 24 hours. So what does that tell you? It about tells you it doesn't take millions of years. years. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, all it takes is the right yeah. conditions. I guess right I just use logic. Yes. Logic That's and science. science. This, this is something you can observe and you can repeat. Right. Millions of years. You can't observe it. You can't repeat it. You know. So when somebody says it takes millions of years to form fossils, that's not something that's been observed or repeated. But you have to be very careful of that. But you know what the secularists say, the evolutionists say? Wow, we can do in a laboratory in hours <laughs> what it takes nature millions of years to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, which means it doesn't take many. You know, years. fossils right. aren't the only thing. I mean, we can make coal in weeks. We can make gemstones. oil in thirty minutes. Gemstones, petrified wood, rock layers. And what they was amazing was too. They looked yeah. at these up close under the microscope, and they look identical to the fossils that supposedly took millions of years to form. So not just on a surface level, but even on a microscopic level, they're very similar. Yeah, now essentially really what they did is they heated it up to about 400 degrees Fahrenheit. They put about 3,500 uh, PSI of pressure on it. Uh, just to give you an idea, that's about 8,000 feet of ocean water, if it, just to give you an idea about where that would be. The average ocean is about 12,000 feet. So, I mean, there's there's plenty of water. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you think of fossil formation during the flood, right. perfect conditions perfect to make for that. Well, and you would have had a lot of vol volcanic action as well. And so right. magma coming up and that sort of that's thing right. would have been a lot of heat. Heat, heat, heat and pressure, hey, you know. Did that's you notice problem. what I said before? You didn't even notice. Because we got primarily the American audience. There's some Canadians here, too. And uh, someone, someone from, from Austria, Austria. Yeah. I, I said laboratory. Laboratory, right? Is La is laboratory. You guys say we laboratory. Say laboratory. Laboratory is how we say it. Laboratory. Yeah. Laboratory. Whatever. Sorry. Sorry. The only Alimini. thing I like, one of the things I like about the um, Australian and British accents, instead of evolution, it's evolution. E V I L. I love how it sounds like evil, you know, evil. <laughs> yeah, E V I L. We should yeah. spell it that way. Yeah, I like you know, that. that would apparently, be great. people have tried this and they, they always ran into a problem trying to make these fossils in a lab before because they basically did it as a closed system. So all the, the, the bio material stayed there. So as they tried to compress it, it didn't quite work right. The difference with this one is they allowed that to seep out, which is exactly what would happen uh, and, with a global and fossil. And you know, the other thing to remember is to make a fossil, it requires a catastrophic event. You've got to cover something quickly. I mean, I, when I'm teaching kids, I use the example, imagine your pet cat just died. And I use cats because I don't like cats. Earl, but here we go again. Imagine the your, number, the yeah, Earl and you go out gone. and you put your cat, pet cat on the front yard and you put a sign on it, dead cat fossilizing, scientific experiment, do not touch. And then you start taking notes, right? Day one, dead cat on grass. Day seven, smelly dead cat on grass. Day 14, very smelly dead cat on grass. And the coyotes got to it. Day 15, <laughs> bits of cat missing. Day 32, where is cat? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because you've got to cover something quickly to preserve it, right? right. Yeah, yeah, you want to seal out the oxygen and make it a candidate for fossilization. Yeah, we had some roadkill recently on the road we live on, and the vultures were there. There was a coyote I saw there. There was nothing left after a couple of days. Stuff like that just doesn't fossilize. Okay. So we've talked about fossils. We've had a whole chapter on fossils. Um, so just a refresher on um, fossils having to uh, have the right pressure. Um, they have to block out the, the excess oxygen. Um, they form quickly. And um, now we know that they can form quickly in, in as fast as 24 hours. Um, and not over millions of years. All right, there are three layers to the geological column. Remember, we had the other geological column for uniformitarianism, which looks like this, where we have the Precambrian, and then we go from simple animals, mostly ocean water creatures, all the way up to more complex creatures. Um, up here, and this is where we are, uh, in the very top brown line up here above the horse. 
uh, creationists, young earth creationists, think that there are only three layers to the geological column. There's the pre-flood layer, the flood layer, and the post-flood layer. And so let's talk about these layers. Before the flood, uh, this is the rock formed at creation uh, in the sixth day creation of the Lord, and igneous rock formed between the creation and the flood, which would have been uh, a part of any local catastrophes that would have happened to form igneous rock before the flood. During the flood, this is the Cambrian through Crustaceous period of the, uh, here we go, Cambrian through Crustaceous period of the uh, Uniformitarianist geological column. Uh, and this would have been all of the fossil layers that would have been laid down, all of the rock layers that would have been laid down during the flood. All three types of rock are forming here because we have um, heat, we have um, new minerals spewing out from uh, the vents in the ocean. So we are have all three rock types forming during this time. The hydrothermal vents, which is we just heard in Genesis 7:11, in the 600 year of Noah's life, in the second month on the 17th day of the month on the same day, all the fountains of the great deep burst open, and the floodgates of the sky were open. The rain fell upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. So this is a hydrothermal vent. That's what we call those uh, in the Bible. It's called the fountains of the great deep. We uh, scientifically call those hydrothermal vents. Um, we have uh, ones that spew white, uh, well, it's not really smoke, but um, particulates into the ocean and then black particulates into the ocean. And that is mineral filled water uh, that is coming up. And if you think about the flood, if it was a giant hydrothermal vent, how many minerals were coming out of that that were available to form new rock at that time? So here's how uh, the stages of this geological column would have happened according to a young earth creationist. The precipitates formed would quickly cover things on the seafloor. Now the precipitates are those minerals that are coming out of the hydro thermal vents. Those are quickly covering the seafloor. And the current of the water could carry those precipitates along with other sediment already present across the bottom of the ocean. So out comes a bunch of particles and then these particles are raining down and they're killing and trapping all of the animals that are on the seafloor. So there's your first layer of fossils. And these are the fossils that we find in Cambrian rock. So again, hydrothermal vent breaks open, huge amount of particulates, which are small solids, are coming out of the hydrothermal vents. They are forming a layer of dust, mineral covering over all of the creatures on the seafloor, and those, are, those die and are fossilized. And that's what we see in the earliest Cambrian rock layer here. Okay, stage two. So the fountains of the great are still continuing to pursue precip precipitates um, and organisms that live in the ocean, but higher than the seafloor would eventually get overcome and trapped by them. So the entire ocean is filling with these sediments, these precipitates, um, and they are trapping the animals that were not on the floor, but higher up. So strong s swimmers would have been able to survive even to a higher, um, portion of the um, ocean layers. So here, here's where you are now. So you've got your ones that could swim a little bit, you've got ones that couldn't get travel very far, and then you have your strong swimmers that could have escaped higher up in the ocean, but eventually would have been overcome as well. So then stage three, eventually the flood waters rose to a point where sediments began trapping the land-based plants and animals. So now you're, it's flooding, and uh, th this is your higher up. So now we're up into this area where we're now trapping things that are on land. Um, the more mobile the organisms, the longer it could have survived, 
before it would have been engulfed by the sediment and the wa water. So those are even higher up on the geological column. They could run farther, run faster. Um, so they are higher up in the sediments that are being laid down over the course of this catastrophic event. And then stage four, very mobile and quote, very smart, because this is part of the uniformitarianism's concept is that we have uh, less complex creatures at the bottom and more complex creatures at the top. Well, these more complex, and we, we know that God made everything, you know, in a way that we can barely comprehend. So, um, and that we're still learning about. So even the simplest organism is complex. Um, however, uh, this is why we see these very mobile, very smart organisms are able to escape to higher land. They would eventually be covered with water. And because they weren't co rapidly covered, like the, everything remember on the bottom of the sea floor was rapidly covered and rapidly died and rapidly fossilized like the video talked about. Um, but these are slowly drowning uh, and their bodies would not rot away, uh, excuse me, their bodies would water, rot away rather than becoming quickly fossilized. So this is why we don't have fossils of horses as much or um, people, things like that, okay? Here is an example that supports this uh, stage progression of young earth creationists view. And this is a footprint of an animal that should not be in this rock. So according to uniformitarianism, this rock is like 350 billion years old and the animal that made the footprint in the rock should not have lived for another uh, 30 million years. So. Um, but this supports young earth um, creationists in that if it was all being formed at the same time and this animal is running away, then this animal could have left this track in this rock as more rock is being formed on top of the rock that made the footprint. Another part of uh, the theory of young earth creationists are floating islands, which as this major catastrophe is happening, it's ripping up vegetation, it's ripping up trees, it's ripping up pieces of land. And so animals uh, could have survived for some amount of time on floating islands. And that would place them higher in the geological column. Doesn't the order of fossils in the rock record favor long ages? Does the order of fossils in the rock record favor long ages? Absolutely not. Let's look at the order in the fossil record. When we go to the lowest layers, we find only marine fossils, shallow water marine invertebrate fossils. And it's only higher in the record that we find the remains of amphibians and reptiles and birds and mammals. Now, what does the Bible say? The Bible says that the flood began in the ocean basins. The fountains of the great deep broke open. And that means the ocean floor was ripped apart. You would have generated tsunamis or tidal waves that would have moved towards the ocean, towards the continents. That means they would have ripped up the sediments on the ocean floor, picked up the shallow marine uh, critters and dumped them up on the continents. And that's exactly what we find in the record. The shallow water marine creatures are buried first. Then as the ocean waters rise higher and higher, they're going to bury the suffocated fish and then they're going to overwhelm amphibians and then the reptiles, the mammals and the birds. It's interesting that we find in the fossil record, the footprints of the uh, mammals and the birds, the reptiles and the amphibians before we actually find the whole critter buried and fossilized. And that fits exactly with what the Bible says about the flood, because these critters who are quite mobile, unlike the, the corals that have to stay in one place, so they're easily overwhelmed. The fish, well, they sense a certain amount of danger and then they suffocate and get buried. 
but the amphibians, the reptiles, the birds and the mammals, they can sense danger, they're more mobile, they can move around, and that's what they did. They were running around on, on wet surfaces, leaving their footprints, swimming in the waters, leaving more footprints until they finally got overwhelmed by the floodwaters and were buried. Look at, look at the picture another way. If we take habitats on the present earth, we've got different habitats at different elevations. So at the bottom of the Grand Canyon, for example, we've got a desert environment with cacti. At the top of the Grand Canyon, the south rim, we've got Ponderoso Pine. Now imagine the floodwaters progressively rising, they will progressively bury these different habitats. And so you don't get mixtures, you get these different habitats. And that's exactly what we see. Marine habitats buried first and later land habitats. So the land creatures would have been buried last. And that fits exactly what the Bible says. Does it need long ages? Absolutely not. With the catastrophic global flood as described in the Bible, you have these sediments being ripped up, the creatures being buried and fossilized in an order that fits exactly what the Bible says about the progression of the flood. So no, the order of the fossils do not favor long ages, but they do fit with the biblical record of the Genesis flood. Okay, the last thing I wanna talk about in this video is the great unconformity and that is a separation between rock layers caused by a period where there's no deposition, where there's no deposits being made. And this line right here that you can see all the way across here, this was a picture on your book, is that line, the great unconformity. And it is found around the world and it separates the fossil rich sedimentary rock from your sedimentary rock up here and here's igneous and metamorphic rock down here. Um, and this is where young earth creationists feel that there was a separation between the rock formed pre-flood rock and during the flood, post-flood rock here. Um, and again, that is found around the world. All right, so your assignment for today is to go back to this right here stage one, and I want you to draw a picture, one picture that shows stages one through four. So you might have a piece of the ocean with a thermal vent with some critters and some sediment falling, killing those. And then you might have some fish swimming from like a big cloud of sediment. And then you might have waters that rise. So in, in four comic strip type, um, boxes so you're going to have one piece of paper with four boxes stage one stage two stage three stage four draw a picture of what's happening in each stage of uh, the formation of the geological column in the perspective of a young earth creationist okay and then i will make a jupiter ed assignment and you upload that you also need to upload all your um module eight chapter eight work and you also have an open book test um, for chapter eight that you need to be working on that is due on monday and i will visit half-life quickly on monday and then we will start chapter nine on monday so enjoy what's left of the snow um, and i look forward to seeing you guys on monday take care